borrow your bags, lady? Peter, how nice. None of that nonsense, Mrs. Kenwood. I didn't run out on a deadline just to shake hands with my ex-reporter. How are you? Was it a bad crossing? Not too bad. Crowded, of course. How did you know I was aboard? Well, I still have an office in London, you know, even if you wouldn't have anything to do with it. They could have wrangled passage for you weeks ago if you'd let them. I know, Peter, but I wasn't in any special hurry to get home. And lots of other guys were. Well, come on, I have a cab waiting. Joan, why didn't you keep in touch with us after Barry was killed? The office wired me that you were ill and then that you'd left London entirely. I just didn't want to see anybody or do anything for a while. Well, you're back here again now anyway. The driver, Plaza Hotel. I was able to get you a room for a few nights. Your job is waiting for you as soon as you're settled. Peter, would you mind telling the driver to make that Penn Station instead? I don't think you'd like the rooms there any better. I don't want a room. I want a train. I'm going to the farm. Driver, would you make that Penn Station, please? Are you still running away, Joan? I thought that now you were home, you, you'd make it stick. That's what I'm trying to do, Peter. I'm going down to Virginia because that's where Barry and I were happiest. He was our home. Okay, darling. That's the way you want it. But at least let me give you a homecoming. How about dinner and then a show? I'll get you back in time for the midnight train. Driver, make that the colony. No, Peter, I'm sorry. I'm going to be on that train at 8 o'clock. Penn Station, driver. Look at lady. I don't care where you go as long as you go somewhere. And now. It's Penn Station. Penn Station. Okay, let us leave it that way. That's what I thought, too, but Pappy got me all fallen up. Gertie ain't no bird, and she sure ain't no catfish. Come on. Thanks for the lift, Mrs. Stewart. Don't mention it. It's good to have you back, Miss Joan. Will there be a trunk coming to the station? No, just one large bag. I'll send it right up. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.
date, youngest boy. Uh, no, ma'am. I got three kids, brother, and a baby sister. I gotta get, I gotta go. What's all the excitement? It's Gertie. The sissy wants Gertie's medicine. I know, it's the cow tonic in the big green bottle. Yes, ma'am, that's it, the big green bottle with the cow tonic. Yes, ma'am. But can you tell me what the old cow gotta do with the old catfish? Do they have no catfishes, too? Well, seems to me I do remember hearing something. Nice going, Gertie, old girl, old girl. Not too much water, Nate. Where's that medicine, huh? Here. Miss Sean. Oh, you looks a little puny. Here, you better give him some. What did you say? Oh, Joan, I'll give you a big hug as soon as I get through. That can wait. You've changed. Nothing's changed around here. Everything's still the same. Yeah. Believe me, it isn't all milk and honey either. Yes, it is, Aunt Sissy. Milk and honey and sunshine and new calves. You done got the medicine. Ah, oh, hallelujah. That's wonderful. Oh, it's so good to have you back, Joan. She was so short-handed around here. Oh, where's Aunt Emily? Oh, that blue-nosed sister of mine, she's probably still in bed. Emmy! Hey, Emmy, are you up yet? Hey, Sissy, please, please. Must you always bellow like one of your animals when they... But look who's here. Joan, is that you? Well, I don't see you recognize her. Oh, stop you. drooling, Emmy. You'd only recognize her. She had a long black veil. Hurry and kiss her before her feelings are hurt. Hello, Emmy. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, you poor darling. Take her up to the guest room, Emmy, and hurry. We're going to have breakfast right away. Guest room? Why can't I have my old room? Oh, well, I thought... Uh... No, I'd rather, please. All right, help her get settled. And don't talk her ear off, huh? Cindy does all the talking, and I'll take all the blame. <laughs> so nice to have you here, my dear. Tell me about Barry. How did it happen? I'd rather not talk about it. Not talk about it with a hero in the family? Please, Aunt Emmy. Oh, very well, if you don't want to. But I'm a widow, too. I'll admit, my Frank died of colic at the age of 70, but I'll still talk about him. And your great-grandmother had no objection talking about your great-grandfather, who died so bravely at Chancellorsville, at the head of his regiment, on a horse. Well, here we are. We haven't touched anything very much except to clean it. That isn't easy with Sissy around. Please, I'd rather go in alone. Oh, very well. Oh, I'm home, darling.
can't have no apples. Come on, Grant, let me. No, you can't have no apples. Not a little bit. Now, go on, go on, get along. I still don't understand why with our beautiful dining room we eat in the kitchen. I'm sure it's not what Joan has been used to, is it, my dear? I'm used to lots of things, Aunt Amy. Emmy read a book about the family once and she's never gotten over it. Lucky that someone around here has a little reverence for tradition. Will you show me how traditional grow crops and raise animals and I'll buy some of it. That's right, Rosie. Give her a lot and that's what she needs to get her looking good again. That and a lot of work and fresh air. Huh? I think she should rest. Under the circumstances, I don't think it's at all proper for Joan to be tearing around the farm like a young girl. Emmy, for the love of heaven, what do you think she is, a middle-aged woman? When I first became a widow, I never appeared anywhere for over a year. Well, look at you now. <laughs> is that supposed to be good? I missed your cooking, Rosie. Miss Joan, you just miss cooking. Farmers can't cook. <laughs> you realize, baby, I only married you so I could get in on Rosie's cooking once in a while. If anything ever happens to Rosie, you're a dead pigeon. Get a lot of crust, baby. Competing with the best cook in the business. What's that, Miss Jones? She's a boiling. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do say so, it was a masterly bit of fishing. And you, you piker, all you could catch was me. Remember, John? just right. Here, loosen up the dirt around the roots. And look out, you don't cut any now. Joan, where do you think you're going this time of night? To New York, Aunt Sissy. I can't take it here any longer. 
Not even until morning? Especially not until morning. I was waiting for this to happen, honey. You tried. But the farm is no place for you. You must have friends and life. You must have love again, Joan. That's not why I'm going. It's just that I've got to get out of here. Maybe find some sort of job again. I don't know. But even if you're lucky enough to find something to fill your mind, your heart and your body will still be empty, Joan. And love is the only thing that can fill them. There'll never be room for anyone in my heart but Barry. He fills it every minute of the day and night. He is my heart, Aunt Sissy. But you must try to find the thing you had with Barry. A real marriage and companionship. A home. That's what you're made for, Joan. Not a loneliness like mine and Emmeline's. You don't understand that, Sissy. Maybe you can't. What Barry and I had together happens only once in a lifetime. We thought alike. We felt alike. We lived together like one person. I'd rather go without love the rest of my life than have it less than that. Well, that's what you think now. But you haven't lived alone very long yet, Joan. on the train. Yeah. Thank you. Well, this is the same as any other vestibule, except here you have nice company. Cigarette? No, thank you. You got New York? Obviously. Well, that makes it nice and cozy. So am I. Oh, I see. Long arm of coincidence. I bet the whistlers up there must have had quite a time when you came through. They're better in the car ahead. Not as much finesse, but louder. You seem to be quite an authority. Oh, sure. I won the Whistling at Girls Championship of three counties. How are you at Whistling at Fellows? I don't think I'd be very good at it. With those lips? I bet you would. Forget I mentioned it, Will. I'd be glad to forget anything you mentioned. That puts you in a large, undistinguished company. If you want to be really exclusive, you should hang on to my every word. I like it this way, if you don't mind. So do I, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Hope you have somewhere to go. Naturally. Thank you for helping me in every way. That's all right. No charge for the advice. For the bag, it'll be a quarter. That'll be a cheap price to pay for ending this relationship. Of course, this won't go far. I have a date tonight anyway. Tell you what, you give me a phone number and I may call you tomorrow or the next day. I think you better save the quarter. All right, where are you going? The answer. You'll never get in there. I'll take that route. Take it away, the Astor. All right, bring it in. What's the matter, Lieutenant? Can you do any good there? I've done better. 
Well, don't let it worry you, buddy. This town is crawling with it. Where to, Lieutenant? Try the... Try the Aster. Okay. Thank you, sir. You know. Is this where you laugh at me when I ask for a room? Well, as a matter of fact, we haven't anything at all. Have you tried that uh, officer's dormitory on 82nd Street? No, but I had a pretty good offer from the YWCA. Well, we may have something for you Monday. That's well. Have you a room where I can wait in the meantime? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. All those rooms are occupied, too. We'll let you know if anything turns up. All right, call me in Central Park. Fourth bench in for 59th Street. Yes. Yeah. Thought you were all fixed up. Well, obviously I was wrong. I'm sorry, we're filled up solid for a week. You see, you're wrong again. There's nothing here either. I'll tell you what, if you promise not to make any advances, I'll buy you a couple of cocktails and some dinner. Thank you very much, but I don't like cocktails and I never eat dinner. You're just the person I'm looking for. Most of the girls I know eat a big dinner, and they eat a big supper. What are you going to do about a room? I have friends. You should try making a few sometime. That's what I've been trying to do. Well, I wish you'd stop practicing on me. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Would you get me Wickersham 65984, please? Thank you. Phone five, please. Thank you. Hello, Peg. This is Joan. I'm in town and I haven't anywhere to stay. Can you put me up? Of course, Joe. You come right on over. All right, if you're sure I won't be crowding. Thanks, Peg. I'll be right over. Bye. Did my wife just make a phone call from here? I'm sure I don't know. She's pretty, has brown eyes, and stands about that height. I was supposed to call her at that number, but I, uh... I lost it. Well, I think I know who you mean. Brown hat? Yeah, that's right. That number was Wickersham 65984. Shall I dial it for you? Oh, no. Wickersham 65984. I sure appreciate it. I know she does, too. I see she sends you a pair of nylons. you got in. I could have met you and helped wrestle with the bag. Oh, I don't know. I was tired and I thought I'd find a room somewhere and go right to bed. But now I'm here. Oh, Peg, it's so wonderful to see. <laughs> We've all had such good times together here, haven't we? You bet we have, honey. The best. For a minute, I... Come on, get your things and come on in here. I have something to do. It's so good to have you here, Joan. Why don't you lie down and rest a little? You look tired. Well, I'm not too tired to help you do that. Aw. <laughs> How is Bill Peg? Do you hear often? Oh, as often as any wife of the husband in the submarine service, I guess. He sounds swell. Not even a war could change Bill. That's true. Barry and I used to talk about that grin of his whenever we got homesick. It was the most American thing we could think of. <laughs> Why, Peg, aren't you getting fancy? Oh, that isn't mine. It belongs to a girl named Mac. <laughs> I met her right after Bill left. She was just back from a GI camp show tour and didn't have any place to live, so I invited her to move in and share expenses. 
Peg, you didn't have room here for me at all. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, now listen, you nitwit. Let's have none of this. Will I be in the way, stuff? Come on. I'll buy you a drink. Look out, kitty cat. Oh, for heaven's sake, Peg, don't you ever dry clean this animal? That's not an animal. That's an obstacle course. <laughs> What are all those cocktails for? You'll see what they're for. There, they can fight for it. Oh, here, Joan, put it over there on the table, will you? Yeah. Thanks. Here it starts, right on top. Is Miss McAllister in? No, she isn't, but I expect her soon. Would you like to wait? Yes, thanks. This is Joan Kenwood. I'm Peg Martin. Lieutenant... Pearson. How do you do? How do you do? Hello. How do you do? Will you have a martini? Don't mind if I do. Thanks. I'll get the glasses. Well, sit down. Make yourself at home. Well, thank you. Does he get the olive? No, we saved it for prize. Oh, I'm sorry, Lieutenant. Will you give me a hand with them? I'll take them. Oh, thank you. Mac and her souvenirs. They do more damage here than they ever did where they came from. All right, you take it. Just put this. Hello, is Miss McAllister in? No, but she's expected. Would you like to come in? Would you like to sit down? Would you like a martini? Sure, thanks. This is Joan Kenwood, and I'm Peg Martin. How do you do? My name's Hope. Hope. Lieutenant Pearson. Mm-hmm. Hi. Hello. Why don't you fellas just meet back in Madison Square Garden? Thank you. Oh, hello, fellas. Hi, you, Peg. I'd almost forgotten you were coming. Have you got the spot ready? Sure. I've been working on it all afternoon. The sponsor wants to hear it tomorrow morning at 10. Well, okay, let's run through it. Good. Here's your stuff. Now you come in at the spots that are marked. Mm -hmm. Okay, fellas, the fanfare. Fellow sufferers, are you plump? Hmm? When you walk in the sun, does your shadow look like a crowd following you? Hmm? Are your tonsils on the bulgy side? Hmm? Do you have to use a shoehorn to take your vitamin pills? You do? Hmm, why not try a bottle of Rumpelweiss Ripping Remedy as for Ulfrika From the Alps to the Yosemite as for Ulfrika Ulfrika cures anything, put it in your gas tank No king Rumpelweiss Ripping Remedy as for Ulfrika And Ulfrika stuff backwards is a girl too Gesundheit A girl too Gesundheit But a little baby loves How'd you like it, Peg? Well, I... Great. Okay, fellas, few more rehearsals and we'll have it. See you tomorrow at 10, Peg. You know, I think we got sure. something here, fellas. Sure. Oh, Goodbye, Peg. Goodbye. Do you do that all the time, Peg, or was that just to entertain us? <laughs> Two birds with one stone. Just bring those things in here, Ducky. That's a good boy. Oh, hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Oh, this is Mr. Black. Smith. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, you. Oh, I got some rayon stockings. They're just like nylon, except they can't use them for parachutes. <laughs> Mac, I presume you know these fellows. Oh, yes. But you don't know Joan Kenwood, Miss McAllister. Hello. Well, how do you do? <laughs> was it tonight I was supposed to see you fellows? Well, I don't know about the Marine, but you had a date with me. Vice versa. Oh, I don't know how I get into these things. I have a date with Mr. Green, too. Smith. Oh, yes. Oh, I have a wonderful idea. Look, there's three of us and three of you fellas. Why couldn't we all go out and then you fellas could match to see who gets me? <laughs> who goes with you? The loser? Of course not, silly. The winner. <laughs> well, I guess it's all in the point of view. Joan, would you like to go out? You go ahead, Peg. I'm afraid I'm too tired. Oh, come on. It'll do you good. How do you know it'll do her good if you don't know what's wrong with her? Well, going out does almost anything good. Uh, doesn't it? Oh, come on, Ducky. Help me put those things away, will you? 
I'll go in and straighten out Glamour first. <coughs> Joan, take care of Max Dilemmas, will you? Sorry, fellas, nothing personal. Mac, if you want to get rid of that stuff, why don't you just throw it in there? Oh, that's a wonderful idea. You know, Peggy... I don't know why our closets are always so crowded. I have it all worked out, darling. I'll tell you sometime. Oh, I wish you would. I never had a thing to wear, and yet our closets are always full. Oh, Ducky, why don't you go in the other room a minute? Entertain the boys. Uh, tell them about the Battle of Zoo Sea. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, put those things in here. Just put those on the floor, though. Battle stations. My, I don't know where I'm going to put all that stuff. It's a good idea not to put it in your guest back. Oh. I'd better get back to see. It's dangerous around here. Who's the lovely in the other room? She's a friend of mine, and she's going to stay here with us for a while. Mac, if you don't mind, I'd like her to sleep in here. You can use the day there. It's okay by me, but I hope she brought her own closet. Here's an island. All right. And here's another one. Okay. And another one. Okay. Another one. Okay. Okay. Another one. Okay. And this is Lingayan. Okay. And here we are. Where are we? Oh, here we are. Coming in right out in the open with no attempt at concealment. Oh, rats. That's got absolutely nothing to do with it. The point is, who took that island? The Marines. And who established the beachhead on that island? The Marines. The Marines, the Marines, the Marines, the Marines, the Marines. So? So you can't say the fast initial penetration is tactically wrong because the Marines hit small islands. The Army hits big places where they got room to maneuver and take the enemy by surprise. That's a quack. That's not so. Take Luzon. Where did we go in? Right where everybody knew we had to go in. Right where Can't you get them calmed down? They'll be throwing things in a minute. I hope they do. A couple of casualties and maybe we'll have a little more air in here. Oh, you're out of your head. Say that again and I'll what break your... Take it easy. Gosh, fellas, spread out. It always kills me how these guys forget who brings them in. Get him. Break it up, fellas. Joan, can't you keep the armed forces in line? I said now, now once, but I don't think they heard me. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I must have got the wrong number after all. I'm sorry. Oh, it's probably the right number. You might as well come in. We're short a pilot anyway. Thanks. What is this? Be kind of servicemen week? Hope I didn't keep you waiting long. Oh, he's for you. Mm-hmm. Oh. And she's for me. Do you know this roguish fellow? About as much as I care to. We have just a slight snubbing acquaintance. May I ask what you're doing here, Lieutenant? Hmm? Oh, um, having a martini, I hope. You're up on your lines anyway. Most of them have to rehearse once. Thanks. I'm afraid the big city got to you awfully fast. Two hours ago, you didn't drink cocktails. Look, Lieutenant, let's just have a nice, quiet little explanation, shall we? Mm -hmm. How did you get in here? And most of all, why? Well, to the first one, I think she told me. I said on the phone, is this 379 East 64th Street? And she said, no, it's 297 East 54th Street. <laughs> Incidentally, you're the telephone operator of a pair of nylons for giving me the number. You still haven't answered my second question. Why, Lieutenant? Why? Oh, I don't know. Put it out of the sporting instinct. The chase, tally-ho and all that. Old Cameron never shoots from sitting. Cameron, is that your name? James Augustus Charles, at your service, madame. Smith. Hello, Smith. Pearson. Pearson. Hope, howdy. Oh, McAllister. <laughs> Hello. Martin. Now, if you've all synchronized watches, let's go, shall we? Oh, but I thought you weren't going. Oh, you must have misunderstood. I simply said I wasn't going to dress. Oh. Oh, come to the party, honey. Can't you see there's dirty work afoot? I don't know what you're talking about, but you're awfully cute. Why don't you come along? There's plenty of room. Plenty of room? Where? I don't know. Where are we going? Well, as a matter of fact, I did have other plans. But since you insist, I will. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Oh, do you need a car? He looks strong enough to carry it without one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
fine hoops first. If we put up a maypole, I could get in it, too. I'm <laughs> sure you fellas all respect my position. Yes. Oh, I yeah. got two strikes and a corporal. Love you. Three of us trip the light fantastic. Thank you, but I promise this dance to Lieutenant Pearson. Suicide. Not this week. Romance is entered to my life. You mind? I'll try and keep off your feet most of the time. Gonna give me the silent treatment, huh? Well, I can sweat that out too. All of a sudden, my heart sings when I remember little things. Say goodnight The crazy things we say and do The fun it is to be with you The magic thrill that's in your touch Oh darling, I love you so much What's the matter? Anytime you hear this one, baby You'll know I wish I were there Something wrong? I'm sorry, I can't stick Wind and rain upon your face. The breathless world. You're in the sorry, Peg, I'm going. Do you need me? No, I just want to get out of here. Okay, darling. The keys in the mailbox. You sure got away with the women, ain't you? You should see me on Tuesdays. I'll give them apoplexy. The others should take care of my cut of the damages. If there's any change, buy yourself a transfer to the army. Thanks. I understand it's a lot safer. Oh, that's propaganda. Didn't you just see me get murdered? So on, Peg. Goodbye now. Really, Lieutenant, what does it take to make you realize you're not wanted? My older friends usually fan me lightly with a telegraph pole. Besides, when I've been out with a lady, I generally see she gets home. I'd hardly say you've been out with me. That's more or less a technicality. <laughs> Who's the guy? What guy? The guy you're running away from. The fellow who sang the song he didn't mean. You must be judging others by yourself. Well, it's a pretty good yardstick. I believed in songs once, too. Now my girl's singing them to someone else. She was just one of those who couldn't wait. So you think all women are like that? Too many. And I know plenty of fellows in my squadron who'd agree with me. Guys who reached for a letter and got a Reno clipping instead. Shall I let the cab go? No. Just a minute, Bud. I've heard that one before. Me too, but my dough's down on you. Thanks. Keep it there. I'm not going to ask you when you know. Listen, that memory book stuff doesn't get you anywhere. It shows all over you that it doesn't. Why don't you drop that torch and come with me to the party? You and I could have a pretty swell time together, baby. Don't call me baby. Hey, what's wrong with that? It's a personal prejudice. You see, I still happen to be in love with my husband, and he was killed over Berlin. Good night, Lieutenant. Oh, that's the way it goes sometimes, Lieutenant. Just like at the races. You think you pick a winner and you lose your shirt. 
That's when you don't look at the form sheet first. <laughs> a dope sheet for dames. <laughs> it really would save a lot of grief, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's a nifty. I'm going to tell that to the missus when I get home. <laughs> I could. I'm fine now. You should have stayed to close the place up. Oh, I didn't want to stay. First thing I know, Bill's going to hear about one of these deals, and I'll be getting a divorce by Carrier Pigeon. Well, you didn't drag Mac home with you, did you? That would have taken me and ten wild horses. She was in her element, completely surrounded. <laughs> I did bring you home a surprise, though. Or, rather, he brought himself. Who? Peter. He came in just as I was leaving the restaurant. I told him you were here. I also told him you'd probably be asleep, but that didn't faze him. He's out in the kitchen fixing himself a drink. Well, I'd better go out and talk to him. I suppose he wants to put me back to work. Hmm. I wouldn't say that was his entire interest in you. Peter, how are you? I got so excited when you called, I had to rush right over. I'm sorry. I haven't called anyone. Afraid I might lecture you some more? Wear out my welcome? Be a big bad bore? Not at all. I think you gave me some good advice that day. If I'd followed it, I might have been further along by now. Well, it isn't too late. The job's still there. Though I must confess, when you walked in just now, I wasn't thinking of any job. I was thinking how much better you look in that lonely penthouse of mine than behind the typewriter. Well, knowing how you feel about that penthouse, that is a compliment, Mr. Waring. Don't you think the servants might be surprised? Oh, servants in penthouses are paid to be surprised. <laughs> Just offering to share my roof and board, that's all. Uh, whenever you get around to it, of course. Sort of a standing offer, like the job, huh? Well, yes. Though a less tolerant man might take exception to the word standing. <laughs> oh, Peter, you are absurd. But nice. Nice and kind. And a dozen other good things under that Valspar exterior of yours. I'm very grateful for both your standing offers, darling. But... But the penthouse is less tempting than the job. Right, Joan? I'm afraid so. I guess I'll just have to work things out for myself. Okay, darling. I'll never high pressure you again. Promise. Remember. My hat's still in the ring. And as long as I have an office or a penthouse, you'll never have to sell apples. I'll remember. And a fine warm thought it is to hug to my heart in the long winter evenings.
seems to be something wrong with your stroke. You're not following through. It's the crosswind that's getting me. Yeah, let an expert try it. Notice carefully the technique. Thus, thus. Hey, fellas, did you hear what happened to me today? You see, I'm checking this guy out, and we're just coming in over my marinette. There I was, 30,000 feet, no engine, tail assembly shot away, and then my wings fell off. Sports? With my customary genius, I have stumbled upon a brilliant idea. Leave us crank up our flaps and go a wenching for New York Town. Uh. Oh, we've been going in too much. We're spoiled. On the contrary, our friend here hasn't been going in at all. Say, is this the man I know in England? The Ripper of Regent Street, the Terror of Tottenham Court, the Pirate of Piccadilly, the Madman of Maida Vale? Huh? What do you say, James? I don't think so. I'm too... Uh, leave us not have the negative approach. Leave us put on our chapeau and get airborne. But uh, I've only got about ten rugs in my pocket. Think nothing of it. Our friend James, here ought to be groggy with currency. He's been a very good boy. I was thinking about shooting crabs tonight. Uh-uh. None of that now. What can a paradise do that a beautiful redhead can't? What do you say, James? Okay. I'll go in with you. But I've got my own plans. So have I. All I need is a beautiful blonde to see eye to eye with him. Come on, fellas. Oh, I used to work. see you. I should have thought we'd seen enough of each other. Yeah, I don't blame you for that. But I wanted you to know how rotten I felt about the way I behaved. I should have known. Maybe it was a case of mistaken identity. On both sides. I was flying blind, Joan. Otherwise, I wouldn't have pulled such bonus. Well, it's pretty easy to lose your bearings when you're unhappy. Well, I'm far from that way now. In fact, at this minute, I feel better than I have in days. Oh, I almost forgot. I have the whole evening on my hands. What about it? Would you like to take another chance and come to a nightclub with me? No nightclubs. But I was going to a concert. Would that do? In my business, you have to take chances at all times. I'm sure you do. You seem to have been at it quite a while. Yeah, if I had a family of triplets, I'd have enough points for a discharge. Maybe you shouldn't waste your evening with me. We'll take the subway. It'll be faster than trying to find a cab. Okay. Well, I did want a chance to show you how my taxi technique has improved. It'll keep. <laughs> is your husband in the air corps, too? Yes. He was an aerial photographer on his last reconnaissance mission. He is in a hurry. Yes, I, I want downtown, not uptown. She seems to think I'll do reverse traffic. It's the uniform. Maybe she's colorblind. Sure, right? 
she's coming too. Say, you've got to go along for an examination yourself. Company rules. What's your name? Sorry, I'm on my way back to camp. But don't worry, I won't sue. You sure give the folks a thrill. Let's get out of here. Are you all right? Sure, I'm swell. Let's get it while I set up my pants. Now, listen, on. there's a little restaurant half a block east of here on 52nd Street. I'll meet you there in a minute. Yes, Please, sir. Right, that was a swell thing. Oh, yeah, I'll be there. You saved that woman's life. I think you should have a medal. Hey, come on. Hey, come on. starting to bank around in my head. What do you have? Nothing, thanks. Well, Lieutenant, that was quite a stunt. Do you do that often? I usually like time to dig myself a slip trench before the train pulls in. Look, my last clean pair of slacks. I should have stayed at home. You should have stayed and picked up the money that some patriotic citizen collected for you in a hat. No. Came to about $70. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go back and get it. Too late, they gave it to the old lady instead. Ah, uh, very bad for the morale. She probably spent her life falling under subway trains now. I don't think so. She has nine children and 16 grandchildren. In that case, it wouldn't be quite the same thing. Where did you learn so much about the lady's private life? Oh, I also know that she lives in the Bronx, has a husband named Herman, he's a semi-invalid. Three of the children and five of the grandchildren were in the armed forces. She's very grateful to you and wanted to invite you out for Sunday dinner. That one I think I can skip. Where are you going to use all this information? In the dispatch. Oh. You're one of those, huh? I was. Now it seems I am again, thanks to you. You see, Barry, my husband, and I both worked on the dispatch after we were married. He was their best photographer and... We covered almost every assignment together. That's why I couldn't make myself come back to work right away, after he was killed. You don't exactly remind me of a newspaper woman. Well, I didn't exactly feel like one. I started writing captions for Barry's pictures. The managing editor saw them. He said they were inspired. So he marched me over to a typewriter and told me to write about working for the man you love for the woman's page. I've been doing it ever since, on two fingers. Sounds like a pal. Quite a new role for a managing editor, isn't it? So will you be a pal, too, and come by the dispatch office? I want to get some pictures of you. I can just see that article tacked up on the bulletin board in the officers' club, with suitable comments written alongside. But if you say so. Thanks. Check, please. Now let's make with the vital statistics. How many missions have you flown, and did anything exciting happen on any of them? That's all right. Thank you. Are you kidding? 35 in all, one bailout, one crash landing. And I suppose that accent must be Boston. Mm -hmm. Born in London. Then father wanted to come home to Utica. Nice place, almost as lively as Mitchell Field. What do you do there, besides coming to New York, I mean? I sweated out for Japan. And don't ask me when we leave. There's only a tea leaf would know that. future editions eliminate the Wilson story on page five. There's no reason for it. It's in bad taste and it's badly written. Tell Wilson to see me tomorrow at 4.30. Yes? Miss Joan Kenwood is here to see you. Uh, send her in. I'd almost given up. 
Joan always brings her own chaperone with her. Looks like a pretty good idea. Peter, this is Lieutenant Cameron, Mr. Waring. Hi. Sit down, make yourself comfortable. To what am I indebted for this visit? I have a story for you. You mean we play, tear out the front page, stop the presses? No, I don't think it's quite that important. Although the star of the bulletin would probably give it a page three spread. Well, then we'll put it on page one. Yes, Mr. Waring. Our old syntax layer, Miss Joan Kenwood, is back on the payroll again, is up today. Provide her with suitable facilities, including an interpreter. Yes, sir. I trust you're in good standing in the guild. I don't propose to have any labor troubles on your account. Don't you want to know what the story is? Certainly not. I'll read it in the next edition. Now, come on, go to work. I'll take you to lunch tomorrow. I'm very glad to have met you, Lieutenant. Glad to have met you, too. Thanks. Tomorrow at one. It's a date. I don't know what to make of that joker, but I do know I don't like him. He's all right. You just have to understand him. Why? All right, so you don't have to understand him. Come on, let's go. We've got work to do. No, 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 no. I'm afraid we'll have to take another, Lieutenant. You see, you're not looking like a hero. How does a hero look? Well, I can't quite describe it exactly, but you look like a man who just got into the army and doesn't like it. <laughs> you'll have to think of the home folks' morale. I suppose you'd like something like this, huh? Splendid. That's perfect. Hey, wait Thank a minute. You very much, Lieutenant. Nice to have you back, Joan. Thanks, Charlie. It's nice to be back. I'd almost forgotten how to write a new story. Some of the ones we're getting these days never knew. Well, I'll do my bit to add to the confusion. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Right. You're Mrs. Kenwood, aren't you? Yes. I'm Jerry Taylor, shopping guide. How do you do? I'm very glad to know you. How are you getting along? All right, I guess. I haven't really gotten my feet wet, though. Well, I... I don't mean just your job. I mean about everything. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't understand. I mean about Captain Kenwood. What about him? Well, I mean, how do you find it possible to go on without him? Only I'm, I'm sort of in the same boat. Or might be, and... And I don't want it to happen to me. I'm sure you'll understand if I don't care to discuss it. See you're no publicity hound. Well, just think how happy it'll make the public relations officer at the field. Besides, I got a kick out of doing it for you. Thanks, Jim. It isn't every day I get to write up a hero, either. Yeah, i see you again. Would you like to come up to dinner some night? Love to. But remember, you're a working lady now, on a morning newspaper. I'll still have a night off. If you give me a call in a couple of days, I'll let you know when it is. All right, I'll do that. If you'd like to bring a couple of friends with you, I'll see that Peg and Mac haven't anything to do that night. With regard to Mac, that would be a pretty large order, wouldn't it? We'll put up a barrier, I'd say. Better issue passes and have a gate man. If necessary, I'll do that. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Call me. I will. Good night. Don't you have an aspirin and lie down? I like your spirit, but your flesh is weak. Well, I'm just trying to help out. Why don't you both go and sit down? I can do it better by myself. That's gratitude. Here I am, slaving away. Mac, are you sure you didn't make some slight mistake and invite some other people here? It's a little early. I certainly didn't. Unless, um... No, I'm church tomorrow night. 
That's right. It's tomorrow night, and if he comes tonight, I'll send him straight home. That's what I'll do. I'll send him straight home. Well, we'll see. If it's alone and has a uniform on out, it goes. Hello, I'm Jerry Taylor. Oh, hello, oh, Jerry. Come on in. This is Peg Martin. How do you hello. do? This is McAllister. Hi, Jerry hello. Taylor. And this is Bob Johnson. Hello. Hello. My, I'd almost forgotten what a double-breasted suit looked like. Oh, but Bob's the third. He's an engineer in essential war work. Electronics. Oh, that's fine. Maybe you look at the icebox. You know, it's acting awful funny lately. We have an old-seeing eye dog that needs some repairs, too. Oh, it's not true. Matt, do you think you can pour the martinis without causing a major catastrophe? To listen to Peg, you'd think I couldn't do a thing. Matt, no one in their right mind ever said that. You two just sit down and make yourselves comfortable. I'm still milling around out here in the kitchen. Hiya, Peg. Oh, just a moment, young man. Hello. Hello. For a hero, we have to have the proper ceremony. Can't have you walking into places just like any old Air Corps officer. Oh, bah, 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 bah. That's the way it is with heroes, unpredictable. Just when you think you... Oh, my good woman. Are you lonesome? Do you need the love of a good man? Ah, uh, you see how it is, honey? Even my rivals have to build me up. Let's step into my office and see what we're going to do next week. Are you boys patients from the hospital? That's right. The doctor said it was okay for him to be seen in public. Buddy, that's just where the doctor's all wrong. Really, honey, I'm the only one ready to go out and Oh. Do you love me? What's your name? McAllister. <laughs> Miss McAllister. Wonderful. No outraged husbands to cope with. <gasps> Only the entire Army, Navy, and Marine Corps. Oh, well, I'm a resilient man. Oh, you lovely creature. What's your current status? It's married, and it's not current. It's permanent. All the dreams of youth. A hero of the Republic, no doubt, fighting overseas for the principles we all hold so near and dear. He's on a submarine, and he's fighting to get home. Well, until he manages to beat that rotation system, I'll show that I, too, am a patriotic man. I'll guard his treasure for him. That's like getting a bank robber to guard a bank. Who'd know more about same? Lieutenant Cameron, don't you think it would be nice to introduce your friends, or do they usually get thrown out before you can get around to it? <laughs> That's a pity, but they never do. Lieutenants Jackson and Murphy. Well, I think people ought to come in with a big sign on their chest and get this over with quick. I'm Peg Martin. That's Miss Taylor and Bob Johnson. Matt there is strictly on her own. I'm Jim Cameron. Where's Joan? She's in the kitchen. I don't know where we could have put that span. Span? Hey, fellas, I know a nice restaurant down the street. Wait down these fellas. The next time I bring you characters, I'll have my head examined. Hey, fella, you got a nice suit on there. Mind if I try on a coat? I haven't had one on in three years. Oh, Bob's deferred. He's in essential industry. Oh? Electronics. We make a lot of stuff for the Air Corps. Well, that's us. Come on, give me the coat. Oh, come, come, sir. You must try on the jacket. It's beautiful material, and a perfect fit is guaranteed to your well, status. You want no pins in it? Haven't had no, no. so in years, sir. you know. <laughs> well, oh, no, punch my know. chicken and throw me off the train. Get me. I got you, and I'm giving you right back. Oh, uh, just imagine. We, too, may own a coat like that someday. Who knows? And imagine me in a yellow tie with green stripes and purple polka dots. You see, that's how it goes. I'd give anything to trade floors with you fellas. Look, Bud, you better stay right where you are. Right now, they're shoving everything into the infantry. Pilots, for instance, or a dime a dozen, right? Fifteen cents west of Muncie, Indiana. Eighteen cents quoted in Denver, Colorado, but no takers. Stick where you are, Bud. You got a good racket. Don't let anyone kid you out of it. I'm glad somebody's talking some sense into him besides me. That's what they're saying, but it's not what they're thinking, is it? Yeah. What you're thinking is that I'm a guy that got all the breaks while you fellas were getting the wrong end of it. That's what you're thinking, isn't it? Let's talk about something else, boys. Uh... Tell us something about the war. There we were, 30,000 feet. No engines, tail of them shot away, and then the wings fell off. Then what happened? My dear young lady, we flew that plane back and demanded. Absolutely demanded. But they give us one with engines. Then we got transferred to the gliders. Then what happened? And then the wings oh. fell off. Oh, dear. Oh, you're being silly again. <laughs> it's cards. May I help? Well, there really isn't anything to do, Jerry. I just threw the other girls out of here. It was nice of you to ask Bob and me after such short acquaintance. Well, I decided I wanted to know you better. You've been all wrapped up in a big black cloud, Jerry, and I didn't help by brushing it aside. Isn't there some way out? I don't know. I... I really don't. Bob seems to feel that because he's not in uniform, everyone is pointing the finger at him. He doesn't seem to realize that everyone can't wear a uniform and everyone doesn't have to. But if, if he thinks he has to, 
And it's a question of what he cares most about. That or me. We're supposed to be married soon, but I've told him I wouldn't if he enlists. I couldn't take it, Joan. I, I couldn't deliberately make myself a widow. Men come back from the war, Jerry. Those three boys in there came back. Some of them don't come back. You know that better than I do. Joan, if you had to do it over again, what would you do? I'd do the same thing over again. Every decision and every second we had together, all of it would be the same. Because it was right. Line forms to the right. Hello, Jim. I've just discovered why kitchens are so popular. They're always filled with beautiful women. One just whizzed by me in the best of spirits. Did you always dish out a little sunshine with your spaghetti? Naturally. That's so the guests won't mind the spaghetti. I think we're all ready. Would you mind sounding the alert? With pleasure. <laughs> we had a lovely time. I hope we'll see you all at our place sometime. Happy honeymoon. Say, bud, you want to sell that coat now? I know a guy who's getting out. And... We hope you'll come back again. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. We'll take you to the front door, but only to make sure you get out of the building. Thank Objected you. Check it again. I don't have my nun skip slacks with me. <laughs> it was nice of you to have us up here. We had a swell time. I'm glad you did. <laughs> I'm sorry Peg threw you all out so soon. Oh, that's all right. We have to get up early anyway and make with the wings. Well, remember, take off fast and land slow. I remember to do that. By the way, I, uh, I won't be bothering you for a time. Oh? I start on a cross country tomorrow, <laughs> ferrying a brass hat. I don't know when I'll be back. Hope you have a nice trip. Oh, I'll have some fun. I'd much rather stick around here, though. But traveling broadens one, haven't you heard? Oh, I think I'm broad enough already. Will you write to me? I don't know. I'm a pretty poor correspondent. That's what everyone says. So am I. I'm going to write to you, so how about it, huh? We'll see. Anyway, I'll see you around about a month. When I come back, we can go out and burn down a warehouse, huh? Okay. Delete these two lines. I think you'll be all right. Oh, how's it going, Joan? Fine, Harold. I noticed Walter the Wolf over there waiting to drool on you. Oh, I'll take care of him. If you need any help, let me know. I'll come over there with a club. How you doing, honey? Fine. Oh, now, say, is that all you do, work? Not a habit I've developed during the time I'm on duty. Me? I don't believe in working during working hours. Sets a bad example. What do you want to do when you get through? Go home. Oh, now, that's silly. <laughs> Pretty girl like you ought to have Pardon something me. better to do than just go home. What are you getting out of life? Enough. Ah, oh, don't be like that, honey. What's all this worth getting? After all, you're first in all the time and last out, and for what? For Peter Waring? <laughs> well, that old goat will throw you right out into the street any time he gets ready. Careful, my boy. You're speaking of your erstwhile employer. Uh, <laughs> hello, sir. My what employer? First while. No. If you go to the cashier, you'll be handsomely overpaid for the work you haven't done the past week. That's all right. I can go right to work on any other paper. I suggest you do it immediately. Good day. Weren't you a bit drastic, Peter? He wouldn't have lasted another week anyway. As a matter of fact, he was right in one respect. You have been working too much and too hard, and I am going to throw you out. For a weekend, starting tomorrow. I've made reservations in Southampton. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to be there, if that's what you're thinking. I want you to live a healthy life and get some sun. Don't make any advances to the bellboys. See you Monday. Joan, this 
guarantees a crowd around you all the time you're on the beach. There ought to be a club that goes with that. Who wants a club? Don't get it too wet, Ducky. Don't worry about that, Mac. They have a little man down at Southampton who dries off the water before the swimmers go in. Is that so? Oh, Peg, you're being silly again. <gasps> oh, I knew I was forgetting something. Like what? Well, before Joan came in, there was a call. It was that lieutenant. I guess that's him now. He said he was coming by. Fine, fine. Anything else you've forgotten? No, that's all. Hello, Joan. Hello, Jim. I, uh, just happened to be in the county, so I thought I'd drop in to see if you still lived here. I'm glad you did. Come on in. Thanks. Hello, Jim. Hello, Peg. Hi, Mac. Hello. Have a nice trip? Yeah, fine, thanks. Just coming or going? Going. Nothing permanent, I hope. No, I'm just going down into Southampton for the weekend. The boss thinks I need a rest. How are you going? Train. Leaves in about an hour. Would you like me to drive you down? Seems like an awfully long trip just for the ride. Think nothing of it. I've got 72 hours and I could do with a little vacation myself. How about it, huh? I'll admit I wasn't looking forward to a train trip. And what are we waiting for? Let's go. I'll be right with you. Is this ready to close? Uh, yes. Nice story they tacked your name to here. Read it on my way up from the field this morning. You've been getting bylines every day? Hardly. Even Peter's into your rubber conscience would scarcely okay that. You're pretty fond of that guy, aren't you, Joan? Peter? Sure. He's our very best friend. Barry and I both were... Yeah, I know. That still doesn't give you an alibi for not answering my letters. Here I am, way off in Kansas and Kalamazoo, pouring out my heart on paper, trying to get acquainted by remote control. And what do I get for it? Not one measly little postcard. I thought we were going to be pals. We are pals. The letters were wonderful, Jim. Maybe that's why I didn't answer them right away. They seem to tell me so much about you. Too much, John? Flying kind of low, aren't you, bud? Guess maybe I was, officer, yeah. Are you all right, dear? This hasn't excited you too much, has it? Oh, I'm all right, only don't argue with the man. There isn't much time. Is she? Yes, officer, so if you just give me the ticket... Uh... Where are you going, Smoky Valley Hospital? Yeah, that's right. Well, follow me. Well, what do we do now, huh? You built us up, my friend. Now let's see you tear it down. You get her in, bud. I'll park the car for you. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, here, let me help you, dear. Uh, take it easy now. All right. Now, be careful. Be careful now. All right. We sure appreciate this, officer. I'll come in in a minute and see how you're doing. You can't always depend on getting in a hospital these days. I might have to run you over to East Hampton. Well, what now? Maybe if we don't look, he'll go away, huh? Uh-oh, look. You disappear. I'll take care of things. Something tells me I should have taken the train. Something tells me I should have, too. How's everything going? Oh, uh, fine, fine. Looks like we might have some action real quick now. I'll wait around a while and see what happens. Oh, I don't think it'll be that quick. Oh, you never can tell. Come on. Well, where? The father's room. The father's room? Yes. They've got it fixed up real nice. Oh, they have, huh? Yeah. I know all about these things. I've got five kids when I saw it. Thanks. Well, here's a new member of the lodge, boys. Oh, <laughs> This your first lieutenant? Hmm? Oh, yes, it is, yeah. Me too. Mrs. Miller and I had just about given up hope after 20 years. It only goes to show you, uh, you never can tell. We have a young lieutenant rooming with us. 
He's in the Air Corps, too. Sometimes I think that that's what changed our luck. Maybe so, yeah. Mr. Miller? Calling Mr. Miller? Mr. Miller? Your wife just gave birth to a seven-pound, six-ounce boy. That's me! Well, congratulations. Fine, great. Seven-pound, six ounces. Thanks for everything. I sure appreciate it. That's all right, Lieutenant. Good luck to the little lady in the Sprout. Hope Thanks. you have many more. Yeah, I sure will. Well, I gotta get back to the highway. I'm running behind schedule now. I'll have to rest the next three fellows I see. Bye-bye. Goodbye, and thanks for everything. Look, fellas, I haven't any cigars, but I do have some extra cigarettes. Here. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Lieutenant. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good luck. So long, fellas. Good luck. Bye. Oh, thanks. Miller! That's me! How am I doing? Oh, fine, you just have a seven-pound, six-ounce boy. Come on, let's get out of here. stroke you broke out with on the last lap. Glad I didn't have any money up on myself. Next time I suppose you're gonna want odds. Yeah, you would have been smart to let me win. The first time. How did I know you were gonna turn out to be such a freighter? How could I know you turn out to be a lady champion? <laughs> Pass one. Shall I open the bottle, sir? Even there I can do it, thanks. Tell me about yourself before the war, Jim. Did you go to school in England? Mm-hmm. Did you find any of your old pals when you went back there this time? Yes. A couple of the guys used to be in the lower form with me at Winchester. Turned up in the RAF. I flew with them till America went into the war. You did? Wonderful. I've heard several of our pilots say they'd almost be willing to swap countries just to stay with the RAF. Yeah. It's glamour, all right. But the minute I set foot in America, I was a goner as an Englishman. This is for me, right here, right now. Maybe after the war you should be a one-man goodwill commission shuttling back and forth between here and England. As a matter of fact, I've just decided that after the war I'm going back to architecture. You know, post-war housing, slum clearance, and reconstruction. There'll be a lot of that needed in London. Cameron? Lieutenant Cameron? Go for it. I'm Cameron. Telegraph for us. Thanks. Bad news, I hope. No. Sure, it's bad news. I've got to report back to the field by 6 a.m. tomorrow. But why? Weren't you supposed to have 72 hours? We haven't even been here 24. Seems they want me at the hospital. No matter of cholera shots. Oh. Oh, cholera shots aren't so bad. At least it's not one of those report back in 30 minute deals. We'll have the rest of today and tonight. If I leave by three or four, I can make it easy. Of course you will. And I'll get up early and go with you. We'll have ham and eggs on the road somewhere. 
Five to one says I beat you dressing for dinner, and that's my last race of the day. to make me feel this high. Oh, listen to the woman. You better take the word of an old tenor. Any one drink is more exciting than any six songs. Which makes you score exactly what for the evening? Nothing like six. Three down, one to go. The only thing you've beaten me at all day. Aren't you ashamed? Hmm? On the contrary, madame. I revel in it. Would you send a camel out into the desert thirsty? Besides, this weekend has to last me a long time. I thought you didn't believe in memory books. Who's talking about memory books? It's the present I'm reveling in. Wine, women, and a new song. Want to try it? since London. There used to be a little place in Piccadilly. Not much larger than a cellar, really, but it... But it had candlelight. And an open fire. And the blitz curtains kept out the sunshine in case you forgot and stayed too long. Were you there often? Very often. And various last night before Berlin. When you go back to rebuild London, Jim, I hope that little place won't need it. Of course it won't. It'll be huddled down there, still cozy and safe, with the sidewalk pulled over its head like a blanket. And I'll walk in and say, send up a waltz for two. But the waiter will look surprised. For two, sir, you'll say? You see, I won't have anyone with me, John. At least not anyone that he can see. Should we go down and see how the music sounds from the beach? I'd like to. I almost hope we can't hear the music. Only the sound the water makes. loveliest sound there is, except maybe the sound of wind in tall grass. I always feel we really got to know each other here, won't you, Joan? Yes, I know we do. Those other times weren't real. Oh, look. Probably a magician's house. The one who comes to life at night and turns the moon on. And the stars. The one who was always whispering from her towers the last enchantment of the Middle Age, huh? Oh, I don't know. It's not exactly a tower, would you say? 
And we don't look much like the Middle Ages. Don't be sorry. Magicians can happen any time. You know it when you hear the factory Oh, I think you're right. I think it's a place where lovers come to look into the future. Shall we look, John? I don't know about the future, Jim. I'm not sure I'm ready for it yet. There is no future and no past. There's only now. I'm more alive in it. Listen, Joan, I love you. In spite of all my wasted moments, I think I've loved you all my life. And you love me too, don't you? Joan, I want you so. No, no, Jim, I can't. Joan, I can't let you go. Barry didn't die for you to die with him. He'd have wanted you to live. Be happy, have everything. Oh, I don't know. I can't know. When you kissed me just then, I wanted you. I felt alive again. As though Barry were here. See his face. Hear him singing. Oh, Jim, it'll always be like that, always. It's all right, darling. Don't cry. Please don't. I wasn't going to tell you that I love you, but tonight's all there is. All we may ever have. I know. I wish it could have been. Could have been all the way. losing the war. They must be down to their last pair of scissors. Do you suppose Bill will bring you some souvenirs, Ducky? If he does, you can open a shop. Oh, I don't think they'd like that in the YWCA. Why, well, don't say, don't you have your alphabet mix? I'm going on and try and get a cab. Of course, Bill won't see a thing when he walks in except you. Oh. But it's a nice gesture. Will he really be here in an hour? Well, that's what his wire said. And don't you dare go till he gets here. He'll be crazy to see you. He'll probably be more crazy if he does. But I have to wait for Peter anyway. He's taking me to this miraculous room in Bath he dug up. Well, it pays to know the boss. Is your husband coming home for good, Mrs. Martin? That's what his wire said. Get out my ball clothes. I'm going back to work. Oh, I didn't know baseball was an essential industry. Funny he'd get a discharge for that. Was he wounded? Oh, heavens no. We're lucky. <laughs> Isn't that cute Lieutenant Cameron coming to help him move? No, he can't leave the field. Oh, has he been a naughty boy? But not naughty enough to keep over that tin can headed for Tokyo. He's shoving off at 4 o'clock today. Come on. I held up a cab with a Tommy gun. So long, Joan and Peg. So long, Bye. So long, fellas. Ask us to dinner sometime. Okay. Well, goodbye, everybody. I guess I have a date. Aren't you even going to try to see Jim again, Joe? He's not expecting me. Then it would be a wonderful surprise, wouldn't it? And it would do him worlds of good. Just think how Barry would have felt if you hadn't been out on that airfield every darn time. But that was Barry. And this is another good guy who loves you. 
If I were you, I'd get out to that airfield as fast as I could and tell him goodbye. We've already said it. And what you really mean, Peg, is you'd not only say goodbye, but goodbye and I'll be waiting. Well, why not, Joe? What's wrong with it? By the time he comes back, you may feel differently about marrying him. But I can't promise to marry a man just because he happens to be going away. I'm not so sure that's the reason, Joe. I've been watching you since the weekend, and you aren't happy about what you've told him. Of course I'm not happy. I hated hurting you. Well, then... Bill. Joe, he's here. Hey, take it easy. You won't last a day out at this rate. That may be Peter. That isn't Bill's walk. Besides, I needed a little practice before I showed up, didn't I? Look, you couldn't have told the difference. Well, I'll be out there again with the Dodgers in no time. And you'll be up there in the stands yelling your head off. Of course you'll be in that outfield again. Isn't there some guy who does it with only one arm? You've got twice as many. You'll see her. Peter, I've, I've forgotten all about him. You're wonderful, both of you. I'll phone you in a day or two. We'll have a housewarming. Thanks for being so swell, Peg. There's probably still time, Joe. Goodbye, Joe. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, Joan. I can't go and look at the apartment now. I want you to drive me to Penn Station. Say, what is this, a routine? Every time I find you a place to live, you want to go to the Penn Station. I've got to get to Mitchell Field right away. Could you possibly drive me all the way? We may have just missed a train. Okay, if my tires hold out. Thank you, Peter. Now, suppose you tell me what this is all about. Stop worrying. We're way ahead of train time now, thanks to a highly superior type of chauffeuring. If only I... I love that. If you hadn't stayed to see Bill, you wouldn't be here at all, would you? I suppose not.
charge of this. Orders are to let no one on the field today. But this is important. I've got to see Lieutenant... If it's anybody from that Pacific bunch, you'll have to look at them from right here. There goes the last of them now. Oh, 